want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. Do you remember those lines from the movie A Few Good Men about Guantanamo Bay? Jack Nicholson's character is brought before a judge and he defends the actions of young Marines standing guard on the border protecting Americans' values against communist Cuba. The other reason people know about Guantanamo Bay is that it's synonymous with a detention facility for suspected terrorists. I'm not here as a US Marine, nor am I here as a detained suspected terrorist. I'm here as a resident who lives and works on a 117-year-old Navy facility. So why do you want me on that wall? My job is to help the 6,000 people who live and work at Naval Station Guantanamo Bay. And in doing so, I have applied my studies on examining borders. And I found that Guantanamo Bay was not exactly what I expected. Borders for me are the lines of a container. They're the boundaries of a container. They let us know who we are. Part of the container, us, or the other, not a part of the container. People who draw the lines, who decide the size of the container, and whether the container changes or not, that's all arbitrary. The border is the place where people fear the other. It is also a place where people develop a curiosity about others, to explore your world. Borders are great places to cross the line. So I asked myself, what borders exist in my life at Guantanamo Bay? Well, let's start with the natural borders. Guantanamo Bay is surrounded by mountains. These mountains help protect us from full impacts of hurricanes, but they also deny us the tropical rainstorms that make the rest of Cuba lush. Our area is very dry and arid. The bay flowing into the Caribbean Sea is another type of border. While we do have an international channel that cuts through the bay, I would need a seafaring ship heading into the Windward Passage in order to cross that boundary. The Bartlett Cayman Fault Line, which drops 1,000 feet right off of our coast, is the tectonic boundary between the North American Plate and the Caribbean Plate. Every so often, we are rocked by seismic activity. Nothing much, but it just lets us know that it's there. Moving on to man-made borders, there are plenty of fences around sensitive areas, but the most omnipresent fence is the one with Cuba, the ones that the Marines are guarding. Unlike most military bases where there's a checkpoint, you show a badge and you get to go out, we are denied going into Cuba. We don't have that luxury to visit other parts of Cuba. The Cubans have built, have planted a cactus cushion that runs along the border and there's landmines left over from the Cold War, from recent wildfires that swept across the boundary. We heard over a thousand landmines go off on their side within a 24-hour period. Fences also help protect other species. We are confined to 45 miles, and half of that is water. For most humans, we feel trapped or isolated, island fever. For other species, they don't. There's a type of desert tree whose pollen floats from one side to the other. For the banana rat, also known as hutia, for the Cuban boa, for the rock iguana, having a fence actually helps protect it. Whereas in the Cuban side, they're threatened, endangered, 
and delicacy. But what brought me to Cuba was actually the non-physical borders. The name Guantanamo Bay is charged with so much emotion and misunderstanding. Everyone thinks that we are only into detaining suspected terrorists. But that detention facility has only been there since 2002. We do so much more than that. The Cuban-American Treaty, it actually says that we are a naval station. We also do migrant operations and disaster relief. Between 1994 and 1996, we had 60,000 Cubans and Haitians who left their containerized area and came to our area. They were hoping to go to the United States, but the United States said, let's vet them first at Guantanamo Bay before resettling them or repatriating them. I also experienced something very different. The name Guantanamo Bay also brings curiosity. And I experience that when I come to the States. Everybody sees me and says, what? You don't work for detainee operations? They're extremely curious. They have all these questions, but they're scared to cross that taboo line of what's it like? I answer their questions, but I won't let them cross that mental border. So why is Guantanamo Bay not the United States, but also not Cuba? We're in this strange boundary of governance. Our commanding officer sets all the rules following the guidelines of US rules in the Navy regulations. We have established National Environmental Protection Act rules for building NEPA-like building rules. However, children born at the US Naval Station Hospital, they still have to apply for US citizenship. Kind of strange. Most car insurance don't want to insure us. They say we are in Cuba, which I guess technically it's true. We are in Cuba, but we can only drive 35 miles an hour. Our communication systems are also not so clear cut. Our mail service, our zip code, it's for Armed Forces Europe. Half of our mail probably ends up in Germany. We get most of their mail, too. Also, our television stations are from Italy. We do have local news stations, which are either broadcast out of South Florida or Pennsylvania. We have one cell phone provider, and I got a phone number from Florida, but my work phone number is from Virginia. We do have two radio stations that broadcast in English. And we're not allowed to have our airwaves cross that line. But I know from the dozen of good salsa Cuban music that their airwaves don't know about that line. Since the 1960s, we have had to produce all of our own electricity and our water. To let you know how precious water is in the desert, during the Spanish-American War, the battle for control of the bay was fought for one well. All of our food and all of our supplies have to come in through airlift or a slow-moving barge. The store manager jokes, it is faster to send something to the moon than to Guantanamo Bay. We have one store, we have lots of garage sales. We have two week, not two day Amazon service. For those people who want the latest gadget or crave the greatest dining, newest dining experience, they feel denied, which makes living 500 miles away from Miami Kind of like living on the moon. We are kind of living in a time bubble, kind of like from the 1950s. We all have a purpose to be there, so there's no homelessness. 
We've all had our security background checks, so it's safe for children to ride their bikes to school, to pick up kids going to and from the beach, to leave your keys in the car. Like, if someone's going to take your car, where are they going to drive it to? <laughs> and yet, with so much trust, we are living in between America's two worst ideological enemies, the communist and suspected terrorist. This trust is something that is disappearing in many parts of the United States and the world. And yet, I still hear people say, I can't wait to move back to the States to see what it's like back in reality. I don't want to paint too much of an idyllic image of Guantanamo Bay. One of the largest struggles that we have is with flights. We have limited flights, limited destinations, lim limited opportunities to cross that border. Sure, if you've got a purpose, if you are moving to and from Guantanamo Bay, or if you have a presentation to come to, there are places on that plane to put you on. But for many people, not having the opportunity to leave makes them have island fever, feel trapped. I mean, sometimes you just want a mental break. Sometimes you want to leave and go shopping. And that's when there's few seats on the plane. And what ends up happening is we have a pecking order. And the pecking order is, is uh, very difficult. Deciding who is a member of our community and who isn't is not as easy as most borders. Your border basically tells you whether you're part of that community or not. So we have a group of Cubans who have lived in Guantanamo since the 1960s. I guess they're our true Guantanamigos. <laughs> then we have some Filipino and Jamaican workers who have spent their entire careers there. They hold the true history of the base. Next group is probably some US contractors, some teachers who are allowed to stay their entire careers. And then there are US government workers like myself. We're allowed to stay five years. Then we have to go back to the States for two years. And I've known many families who spend their entire lives going back and forth to Guantanamo Bay. The most transient population is actually our military. They stay between six months to three years. Then there's that detained population, and I'm not sure how long they're going to be here. First and foremost, we are a naval station. In that regard, naval operations should take priority. But there's a dance we do with all of the branches of government to make sure that everybody can do their mission. But we live 24 hours a day under military rule. We stand at attention twice a day in meditative silence for the rising and the lowering of the flag. These borders that I have spoken about are unique to Guantanamo Bay. But there are plenty of other universal borders. Gender treatment, age, living condition, psychological capabilities, moral characters, so why do you need me on this wall? My job is coordinating opportunities and hope. By understanding my borders, I can help make some people who feel trapped and give them hope. I work to maintain this hope by pushing, extending, warping and transcending borders. For example, I help to coordinate flights with military mo troop movement and high peak travel periods. What I challenge you to do is look at the borders in your life, the ones that are especially challenging to you, the ones that make you feel containerized and trapped, and see if there are ways to move from trapped to hope.
There are many places in this world that are interesting, but not as mysterious and complex as Guantanamo Bay. For me, it's paradise. Thank you.